discover this as a as a novelty. We don't even make any fuss about it. Usually, there's always potatoes left over. Any farmer, whoever sells 100% of their potatoes, there's always a pallet or two of left over. They just get kept for us, so that we have this specialty ingredient that we can do for three, four weeks. Uh, uh, and, and do the guests know that, or do they just get this? No, we tell, we, we tell them. them. We tell them, of course, we tell them. It's not everybody that, no. that cares, obviously. <coughs> Most people, it's just a potato. <laughs> uh, so we are, we are still, still, still discovering all these, uh, these things, these ways of cooking things. Things that we're discovering right now is ways of processing food. Yeah. Well, some very interesting. Uh, the things that we've been doing all the way through uh, this year is uh, with the inspiration of from umami. Do people know what umami is? No? Well, you know, it's this so-called fifth flavor, uh, which, is, uh, which is somehow uh, uh, described as what gives mouth richness uh, you know, to, to, to a bite, a mouthful. But, you see it a lot in, in, in meat, such as meat, such as fish, mushrooms, especially dried mushrooms are rich in umami. But uh, tomatoes is, you know, there's a reason why tomato bolognese sauce is, uh, has taken over the world uh, because it's full of these umami richnesses. And and we study that uh, marmite in England. You know marmite? Mm -hmm. That's actually made of beef very easy. Yeah, it's good. No, it's not completely forbidden, but there was uh, there was a moment where there was some things, but you know. Uh, you still have stash somewhere. No, we make it ourselves oh, okay. because it's so simple to do. You just need all the beer uh, yeast, uh, and then you heat it in various temperatures, and then you add vegetable to it to give it uh, sweetness, and then you have a, a liquid. Once made yourself, that tastes like an extreme mouthful of umami. So suddenly we see beer, uh, we're finding beer with new, you know, in a new way that we never thought. And other ways is that right now we're discovering peas, for instance. Peas, we all eat that during spring, but we dry the peas, and then uh, we try to inoculate it with, uh, with uh, a fungus, the same fungus, which is wild and lives most places now, and that, uh, that is used for miso, especially uh, sauce. Uh, and then we have discovered that that, uh, that our uh, that our dry peas, when they add this fungus, after three months, it starts to separate into a solid and a liquid. Now, usually, when you do this, you do it with soybeans in Japan and in China. And the solid is miso, the liquid is soy sauce. That's how it's done. Uh, but it's, the same thing has happened to us. It's just peas. But so it's, uh, taste, then? it's well, it's uh, not a soy sauce, but it's something wonderful. You know, it is uh, mouth enriching, full of these salty umami tones. The miso, or whatever you want to call it, which is not a miso, is is also equally mouth enriching and and something different and new. And what would you do with that? For I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, don't know. I mean, the, the thing is that with these things, you can do anything. There's the possibilities are endless okay. because these are like pillars for your cuisine. This is, uh, these are ways of flavoring soup or spreading on a toast or glazing a piece of meat in um, or adding uh, to your berries. You know, yeah. there's so many things. It's when, just... when does this happen? When this this discovery? When it's been served? Are you doing that? Are you taking the time out to go and? Uh, we have two kitchens. That? We have uh, one kitchen which is a foundation. Uh, that started three years ago. Uh, we call it the Naughty Food Lab in lack of a, a, a better name for it back then because I hate that name today. Uh, so come up with new names? Yeah, well, they, we call it the lab, but it's not the lab. We work with food. You know, it's a, like a kitchen where we just have more time to work with the ingredients. But that is actually, uh, we did that three years ago as a foundation, a non profit foundation, where uh, the idea is. To generate uh, knowledge, um, just simply that to generate knowledge, and then we uh, we um, we have two people who are full time there. Uh, and obviously, this foundation is funded by other foundations, um, 
and it's a separate kitchen that is away from the restaurant. Uh, and there, you know, there's a board deciding on what is uh, the jobs that we work on. And recently, it's been umami. So we've been working almost a year on umami. And we have many, many other discoveries as well. So this is kind of free for everybody. Once the recipes are there, uh, our chefs uh, from around the region, even here if they want to, they can actually just go onto a website and, and, and get that knowledge. And then we have our own uh, kitchen studio, we can say, where uh, at the restaurant where where it's more about the innovation, and, and, you know. So we have a space, a kind of a free space to work with the new things. Okay. Because um, uh, in the book I also read that um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you still do that, but on like on Saturday night you have the special sessions yeah. after service where all your chefs. Yeah. Have to come up with a new dish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll explain that because that's actually that was one of the very, very, very important uh, transitions for for, for our uh, for our restaurant. Um, I don't know how is there any chefs here? There's a few chefs. Yeah. Well, uh, quite a few. Well, uh, you know, when I was 15, uh, I had my first adult moment. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I know I've been talking, but it's not sexual, okay? Uh, everybody's been talking about the red light district. We even have a frog shaped as a penis. Uh, no, that was an absolute dominant chair. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh. <laughs> um, well, uh, and at that moment, it was a competition. I was I at a chef college, and uh, I didn't know I wanted to be a chef, but I entered chef college. Because of a friend, and uh, on the second day there was a competition, and the and the teacher she asked us uh, to find a recipe. We would cook it, and we'd be judged on flavor and how it was dressed. And that now comes my first adult uh, moment, and that was uh, when I asked myself, "Wow, I, I would like to win this, but what is it actually I like about food?" Um, and there was a strange moment as a as a as a guy that was interested in girls and playing football and not caring about the world, suddenly you were kind of thinking in a, in a, in a new way that I hadn't tried before. And, but that was also a very significant uh, in what I see in a lot of cooks that come to, the, to a restaurant. A lot of these people, they haven't asked themselves what it is they like about food. You know, they go to school. The natural chefs. The natural chefs. They go to school, they learn techniques, they learn perhaps in culinary history. Uh, they start to study uh, guide books and famous restaurants, and then they go and they learn how these restaurants cook. And then comes this Saturday project. Then it's the, the moment where I ask them, okay, well, please show me, show me what you want to cook. You know, if, who are you on a plate? And and uh, it's amazing how how many there is not all, but it, it's amazing how many people don't know. They can have the best Michigan star restaurant uh, experience, but they don't know what they really want. Usually, many of them, they will just cook something that they saw at the other restaurant, or a mixture of it. But, you know, the process of kind of figuring out what it is they want about food can never start too early. Because you think that's, that's essential for someone? It's essential. It makes them better cooks. They will cook better food for the guests. Uh, they will take more part in this. They will be more aware when the ingredients come in. They will be, they, they will also be more devoted uh, if they find out that they are really into what we do. You know, so because what did you want? Did, did you figure it out when you were 15? Did that change what you wanted, or did you not have an answer then? I didn't have an answer, but uh, I found out which dish I want to cook because uh, as a child mm -hmm. I grew up partially in Macedonia. My father is of uh, Muslim descent, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and uh, one of the things that I loved was when we had chicken. And now chicken was a special thing to get in Macedonia because if you got a chicken, it meant you had to slaughter one of them. And if you slaughter one of them, there was less eggs, so it happened rarely. And, and uh, the whole experience started with the slaughter of the chicken and then uh, us, the kids, running around after this headless chicken. I don't know if any of you ever tried this before. And as a kid, it's quite, it's amazing. It's amazing thing. And then, uh, you know, seeing uh, the women with big hands plucking the, uh, the meat and the 
like salt to it, putting in a wood fire oven and seeing it roast uh, with the fat and the drippings uh, falling into the rice. So that was kind of what I thought of. So, uh, this is something that's special to me. So I, we cooked a dish of uh, chicken and rice uh, mm -hmm. for this uh, competition. So, but it was a start, you know, it was a start uh, of, of a process uh, where I, I, did, I, I basically found my inspiration. Yeah. Because now if you're on that project, can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I, I don't know if that's really clear for everyone. Mm -hmm. so, because how many chefs you have in the kitchen? Like? We have uh, more than 40 minutes? chefs right now. 40? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it's not all. They divide into sections, of course, the in kitchen. terms of structure. <laughs> and then uh, on each section, each week, each weekend, we used to do this every night before, mm -hmm. when we were less busy. Every mm -hmm. night, each, and that was each member of the staff, we were also less staff, uh, had to not necessarily a dish, but just something. You know, have they peeled the carrot uh, 10 hours earlier? Maybe that, you know, I just wanted to see that they were thinking about things. Uh, uh, maybe, they had peeled, maybe they had dried the carrot to see uh, what the power tasted like, or something. Yeah. Um, but now it's an actual dish. So the idea that, uh, that each week there's a head chef on each section, and that head chef has to come up with a dish. Uh, using his team members as support, um, which is, you know, I, and a lot of people say, oh, we're so busy in the section, and I keep explaining to them, well, do you want to be a head chef? Yes, of course I want. So then you will have to do this, just be in 10 times more busy, you know? So it's a, that's a good exercise in it. Um, and, and, and then we do that every Saturday. Every Saturday, there's four to six, sometimes eight, sometimes there's two in each section that. But actually cooked it dish. And no no no, 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 you would think that. But actually, this is a, turned into be one of the, the best moments we have in our kitchen. You know, where the whole team's together, it's Saturday night, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, the week is over. Uh, they've been thinking about this for weeks. Uh, we're there not, we're there to, to kind of make each other better, not the, not the opposite, you know. So, so there's really a, a very, very special energy uh, during those hours. And I've seen some of these people, some of these chefs start out years ago as very, very, with very simple, perhaps not that good ideas, we say, but nevertheless, you know, they, and, and to now, we're week by week, really doing masterpieces. I mean, actual masterpieces where, where I think to myself, so does the whole team, that if they had this in a restaurant, any type of restaurant, one, two, three, which we start, they would be just really? super, super. Would you add them to your uh, menu? Do no, you know, I don't do that. This is their own little masterpiece, okay. you know, for them to write in a book and, and uh, somehow take with them. It's a very, very, very good exercise for, for chefs. Did you, did you come up with it yourself? Or did, did, did you learn it somewhere else? Or did you no, it started at the restaurant uh, early on because uh, because we were in this process of of understanding the food and the you know the ingredients and and, and um, I was trying to understand it, but I was very frustrated that that uh, that the staff they, they were so far behind, you know. Which makes completely sense, but so far behind in the understanding of what I wanted. Yes. So I, 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 um, I mean, uh, it makes complete sense. Yeah, I, I didn't know, know what I wanted completely yeah. myself, so how could they know? I mean, uh, it's not a criticism, but it was just a way of kind of thinking, okay, let's see if we can, uh, where we're going, see if we can make people more aware of, of, of the food and why they became a cook and why are they a cook? Do they want to be a cook? You know, because there are some people that, that, that are cooks because it's a, you know, they get somehow trapped in this, um, you know, there's some martyrship in being a cook. What, what ship? Uh, martyr. Martyr. Oh, martyr. You know, there's like. Ma oh, martyrship, yeah. yeah there's there some is. type of martyrship. Yeah, martyr yeah. yeah. And then, well, it's rough and it's loud, nice work piece. hours, it's tough. I'm gonna beat this. I go to the next kitchen. It's much. That's the toughest, and I did it. Yeah. You know, there's this. There's a lot of that. Uh, Tough kitchen. Just well, I uh, I have a Balkan background, <laughs> so uh, I'm not gonna say that I'm an angel, but uh, but uh, I mean these people are, are, are my family. You know, uh, 
some of these people that are the managers I worked with uh, for almost eight years. There you know, was a big handful, and I've seen them more than I've seen my wife. Yeah. You know, I've seen them. Uh, there was only my twin brother and my mother and father that I've seen more than them. Yeah. And uh, do I want to be with them and have a good time? Yes. Yeah. So it, it happens, but it happens rarely yeah. that, that we have these bad times. Most of the times, it's one uh, happy family, yeah. okay. very concentrated family.